The Mona Lisa life be a singular success. Hi there singers, my name is L.K. Fletcher at the Mona Lisa life and I want you to be a singular success. A singular success. This is our production assistant Natalie and we are really lucky to have three amazing singers here and Natalie's mom. So we have Tristan, who is a bass, Rowan, who is a mezzo, <clears throat> Uncle B, <laughs> who we're going to call Brandon, who is a tenor, and then we have this amazing young lady who happens to be a beautiful mama, who is Dr. Lori Atkins, and Dr. Lori Atkins is an OBGYN, but she also is a yoga instructor, and we're going to kind of debrief on some of the mysteries of singing and how some of those answers are found not only in medicine, but in yoga, and where they intersect. So come on and join us for a minute, Dr. Lori. Yay! <laughs> so if I was gonna ask you, you know, I love those books that are called Blank for Dummies. So singing for dummies, <coughs> yoga for dummies. So if I had a yoga for dummies cheat sheet, and, and, and it said three of the big things you need to know about yoga are Blank. What are three of the things you would tell a dummy like me Breathing. about yoga? Breathing. Oh, by the way, what's one of the first things for singers for dummies? Breathing. Breathing. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Okay, so we have that in common, okay? Yoga and singing. Breathing. What would be another one? Focus. Focus. Like visual focus? Yeah. Visual focus. Mm -hmm. wow. so set your visual focus, your mental focus on what you want, <clears throat> and then achieve it. So there's a visual focus in yoga when you're doing any of the poses that you'll just fix your gaze nice and lightly and then you start to move through with your breath. Gosh, I don't know if that would be helpful or not for singers to be more focused on something that's really abstract. Well, what do you look at? Yeah. What do you look at when you're singing? But, well, you're on stage page. and the lights are blinding. What do you look at? The page works. Um, no, because it appears you're looking at the audience. So what are you looking at? Right. Yeah. And I was actually being facetious right when I was talking about focus. So you focus on whatever you want the audience to believe, whoever you want the audience to believe you're communicating to, whether it's the audience at large or you're envisioning a scene or a place or a person. So you have to create something that isn't there. That's a lot And I think often you really are singing to someone in the audience, right? Like sometimes there's a person there that yes. is the person that is receiving so, the message. So if I was standing here and I was singing Someday My Prince Will Come, I wouldn't be looking at my feet or my phone. I would plant that imaginary prince. Maybe I'm looking at him in the distance, or maybe I'm just thinking about him. Someday my prince will come. And then poof out of the <laughs> Hello, Disney. Okay, so I love this. Breathing is the first one. What is the second one? Focus. 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 And the magic number three, yoga for dummies, might be. Yeah, it's really hard. So my first response was going to be feet, but it's really posture. Yeah. So it begins with the feet, but it's just the, it's just posture. It's just standing grounded in the feet, lifting from the ground, and then you know that everything moves from that place. So you, you know, you've got focus where you're looking, breath that is moving in and out, diaphragmatic breaths, just like in singing. In fact, the, some of the best breathers in yoga are singers. And um, and then like finding like that that place of strength and ease in your stance, just how you stand. Um, in your own two feet, grounded, lifting, yet relaxed. That makes perfect sense to me now. Dan, who's online with us, Dan has been, was initially my student, Dan, what, 13 years ago? Long time ago. So Dan had been my student for a very long time, and we reconnected. Rowan has been my student for five years, or six years? Uh, um, Maybe? It's been a while. You were 14 or 15 when you started, and you're in your 20s now. And so one of the things that I teach all my beginning students, and I think this is going to align really well, is there's a pyramid, there's a hierarchy of things we can do for success. And if, like any pyramid, if we have a good foundation, we can build on it. Mm -hmm. And the very fundamental foundation is posture or alignment, because nothing works well if the body's not in alignment. So I thought maybe I'd turn it over to you and we can talk about some ways to check for alignment, whether it's standing or seated or sure. uh, on the mat. So I, I always love to start alignment standing and then we can do kind of whatever we need to do based on like uh, LK was telling me sometimes it's seeing if we hold tension in different parts of the body or 
or that they, even like two relaxes are correct the body. So when you discover what that is, then it might, you might change from standing to something else. Um, so take your socks off. And um, when you do, come and stand up toward the front of the mat. And then, so without changing anything, just put down at your feet, follow the up your legs and into the pelvis, and just kind of look at it, and then stand up out of that space, just stand up, and just feel it. Like, just like be with it for a second. While you're being with it, take a breath. Now, what I would say is that every one of you landed in a pretty significant knee ball posture. Your feet are abducted. Okay. Abducted feet leads to externally rotated hips, which drives the femur bone funky in the pelvis to kind of pull it anteriorly and out. And then it makes it really difficult to neutralize the pelvis from there. Like my pelvis wants to try to compensate, so my glutes will tighten, my hamstrings will tighten, and I get a little sway in my back, and I lose this connection from ribs to pelvis. Okay? Now, there's simple adjustment. Turn your feet so that they're exactly parallel. And you don't have to look at them, and they won't want to stay. Like it's going to be a little bit of work. You're almost there. Yeah. So it's going to feel pigeon toe. Take that heel out more. Don't move your front of your foot. Yeah, just like that. Mm -hmm. Take that heel out more. Don't, no, not, not like that much. Just a little bit. There you go. Yeah, spread your toes out. Yeah, if you're not comfortable touching your feet, bring it over. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then this one comes out. Good. And that one, exactly. Good. I'm going to release it just a little bit so I can see your ankles. So I don't know if you can tell. If you collapse here, do you feel that? Okay. You lined up pretty good. You didn't want me to touch your feet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, the first thing that you're going to do is you, this is like a total change, right? If you feel really pigeon toe, as I can tell. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so what I want you to do now is you're going to like lift your toes up off the floor, separate them, like really separate them. Like you're spreading them like a duck or a gecko, and lay them back down one at a time. Are they on toe at a time? Uh huh. Good. Now, now press through the mount of your foot. So the mount of your foot, mm -hmm. so if you really look, the toes are phalanges, right? Mm -hmm. We're going into the metacarpal. So you want to press mm -hmm. down the mount of the foot, foot which is right here. Mm -hmm. So press here, mount of the foot. Press down there, and then find the center of your heel. Not the whole heel, the center of the heel. Notice that you rotated back up. Go. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> it's work, right? So you want to connect the mount to the center of your heel, right? And then you're gonna, like imagine the foot is a pyramid. You're gonna start to feel the arch lift. Press through the mound, the center of your heel, feel the arch lift. Do you feel it? It's coming off the ground. Yeah, you're, yeah, you can feel it. Now you wanna try to do that without tension in your toes, which is the hard part, because you'll wanna to start to grip and move. But you're just there, and you're in your feet, right? Now, from your feet, you're gonna draw your inner ankles back, outer ankles down, Good. You're going to start to lift from your, your calf into the kneecap. You're going to lift the kneecaps up with your quads. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to lift the front of the pelvis up toward the belly button. Nice. You're going to pull your shoulders up to your ears. Pull them up. Now take your, arm, your upper arm straight back. Pull your front ribs down. Front ribs down. Down. Front ribs down. There it is. Good. Now lay your hands on your side. Nice. You do that. Pull your shoulders straight up. So you've got to walk it up first. So feet. Press down. Inner ankles back. Outer ankles down. So it's pressing down. Inner ankles back. Outer ankles down. Squeeze high down. Knees have to lift with the quads. Breathe in and out. There you go. Front of the pelvis lifts up. Breathe out. Pull your shoulders to your ears. You can do it too. Shoulders to your ears. Pull them way up. Take your arm bones straight back. Arm bones straight back. Good. Lift your head and neck up and draw back. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Now pull your front ribs down towards center. There you go. Now relax a little bit. Relax. Relax into it. So what you need to do is you're trying to hold it with your head. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> so the tendency, so there's this, all this other stuff going on too, right? So head goes back. Mm -hmm. 
Right, ears in line, crown the head forward. Now, just stand there for a second and just feel the difference in standing here. And then use not your mouth, just your nose, and take the deepest breath you can with your diaphragm. And breathe all the way out, same through your nose. Try to listen to the breath. And breathe it all the way out. Now walk around. Just walk around. Mm -hmm. No mat. Because you're going to be. Walk around. Let it go. Just walk around. Okay. Like walk. Be at ease. Be at ease, soldier. Be at ease. And then come back. Stand at the top. Do you feel it? And I see it. Do you feel it? Do you feel the difference? Not quite? I don't know what's different, but something feels different. Right, something? Something yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, generally what I see is there's like just a difference in the strength of you standing from here down. Because before it was a lot of that, and now it's a little bit more of this. And I didn't just coach you again, you kind of came back. And you're not like, as perfect as I drove you, but you were great. Like you came back to a better place. And so what I've learned through all of my injuries in life, and it's been bloody to know that both taught me to stand on my own feet. And there's even like chi running, standing on your own feet, it's letting gravity pull you to in your own feet. So not trying to emulate something else, but really just finding your alignment and kind of being with it. Um, so that's how I usually start with that. And then when we coach, so when we, so the other, like something to kind of like challenge it a little bit is, um, is like balancing poses. So you can set your gaze forward and I want you to find something that's not moving. You can make a light spot on the wall if you want. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> um, you can pick a light spot on the wall if you want, or you can pick, um, you're moving. The electrical aisles can be back a little bit low. Like you want to try to find something that you can look straight at that isn't wavering and it can be a shadow or a spot and you just want to see it. Like just a nice gentle focus on it. Better pull your ears straight back. My ears? Mm-hmm. Okay. From the waist of your neck. Not all of us can move So you are here. I'm looking for your ears. There it is. <laughs> do you feel it? I do not. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're looking forward. So your arms are going to be like at your side, but with the engaged shoulder. So shoulders up and back. There you go. Good. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to shift your weight to your left foot. You're just going to bring your right leg up. You can hold your right leg. There you go. That's turning over to your right hand. Yeah. So now, from your right foot to your right hand to your right shoulder, engage and connect it. So pull that. Create this connection. Press in. Mm -hmm. Press out. Hold it. No, just with your oh. own leg. So, so your leg, leg. Yeah. So your leg is. Uh huh. Leg is lifting. Press out. Press right. in. Connect that. There you go. Now lift the front of the pelvis. Lift up. There you go. Breathe. So not so much supporting the weight as connecting. There you go, good. Going in, good, breathe. And out. So breathe in. And then go up.
turn? Yes, I do. Okay, your turn, oh, Uncle B. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, first just breathe. Okay. Like really breathe. Clean up. Mom, you're stressing him. <laughs> That's a good idea. Okay, so I want you to recognize that all of you do this. When you breathe in, you naturally do that. Okay, do you see it? So you naturally do that to breathe in. What I'm looking for is for you to stay grounded. Use your torso, your accessory breathing muscles, your diaphragm. Breathe in. Now do it. Take a breath. <laughs> now do it. Screen thingy. Did you? Do it? it should be there. Right, Unless we lost yeah. Zoom again. Internet thing or something. <laughs> At <Pretty> ease. Nice. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did the Zoom go? It did. Oh. And it says we have internet. <laughs> what did you say? They just sort of put us in. Give me a minute. I'm not, I'm not having any like oh, my spine is cracking up and down. <laughs> so much bleeding will be fine. Yeah. Like having it, I want to stand like this because I was uh, I did like Taekwondo and Muay Thai for like seven years. Mm. So I want to stand like this. <laughs> Yeah, they taught you well, right? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Andy. Just. I got used this morning. Oh, cool. So I think I want to do the same kind of work in two different places. Um, oh, thanks for coming back. Hey, Dan, we were going to put you on the spot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um,. If you can get a little bit further away from the camera, and if you can just do a five point, uh, and, and we're looking, we're checking out your abs and your feet, bud. Um, Dr. Lori's checking out your abs and your feet. You'll have to, like, yeah, like, there you go. Yeah, bottom half of your body, perfect. Oh, yeah, I don't take, know how, much, how many abs I have. Keep taking your clothes off. Now walk toward the back of the mat. <laughs> walk toward the back. Back, back, back. There you go. Okay. So find your feet, turn them at 12 o'clock, bring them right out of your hips, you're a little bit wide for your bony pelvis. Come in a little bit. Nice. No, you had it. There you go. That's it, right there, right there. And do the, do the thing where you're pressing the mounds of your feet, your foot center of your heel. Press down, press down in the mounds, yep, and center of your heel. Turn your inner ankles back, outer ankles straight down. Lift up into like the kneecaps, the quads lift. It almost creates a spiral in your rotation of your thighs. Bring the pelvis there. And then you just lift the front of the pelvis up toward the belly button and pull your shoulders straight up and straight back. And then when you do that, you want to pull your front ribs toward the pelvis. So you're going to drop the front ribs down a little bit more. There it is. Okay, now take a deep breath in and breathe it all the way out. And take another deep breath in, and this time do your ah. Uh, uh. It's a shame you can't sing. I know. <laughs> How does it feel? Yeah. 
Right. Like that. Like I was pulling it up from the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So they had a, I had a Pilates instructor that used to, she was saying this and she did it like 14 years ago and I had no idea what she was talking about. But I get it now. <laughs> and she was, she would say, yes, from your feet, lift the pelvic cano. I'm like, the pelvic cano? What, what are you talking about? But when you consider like your, your pelvis is a bowl, right? And so what you're, you're really like pressing down and as you lift up, you're lifting that. So you're supporting your lower body centrally, and then you allow the ribs to move where they're supposed to. You're not starting at a place of overextension, starting at a place of neutral. And then that should, in theory, give you more space to breathe and more space for your voice to come out. Without really having to do it, you just have to stand. And so there is a practice of learning how to stand in your feet, for, for real, right? Like you're doing it, and it's a practice. Like your body doesn't naturally want to do that. And I've been practicing this for 16 years. So you know where my feet are, and I know I'm turning it up. So and usually I'll move one in front of the other thing. So let's, let's get Dean on the spot again, and let's have him sing through a sequence of those and see if he can maintain that and the inhalation and the exhalation, because what tends to happen is, is when it gets higher, we get stressed, and we tend to just intrinsically, as singers, correct me if I'm wrong, when it gets higher, we add more tension in the shoulders and the neck, which of course, defeats what we're doing. So I would like to see him go through at least one of those passagios and see how that is impacted or what he can do to maintain that really low focal point. So you so you you want me to move him from his pose or you want me to I'm put him in his pose and he moves his he moves his lyrics. He moves yeah, his I want him to move his voice higher. Okay. And what we want to do is see if we can still work from a position of power and freedom as the voice transitions to a more demanding part of his voice. Okay. So, in this case, I'm going to trust you to keep your feet where they are. Will you yeah. bring your camera higher? So I can see your shoulders. Because the natural tendency is we're going to mess up our own alignment mm -hmm. just because we're going to do this. So we're going to think that's going to help us find it out. Very good. Yeah, so start with your feet and line them right out of your pelvis. Go ahead and ground yeah, into the ball mounds. And I want you to take a couple deep breaths, just right here. Don't don't sing, just a couple deep breaths. And then, you know, when we when we stand into dasana and yoga, our, our hands to actually turn out, and that may not be attractive on the stage, so you can certainly hold them in. But what I don't want you to do is this. So looking for that natural relaxation. And again, it's not disempowering your shoulders. So one thing, what the pelvis does for the legs, the shoulder girdle does for your upper back and neck. Right, so your shoulders are not rolled around. They're actually pulling up and back. They're holding your spine long. Your tailbone and pelvis are grounding it below. Shoulders are pulling it on top. That's what's giving you that length for your breath. And then while you're just standing, I want you to take a few breaths. Don't just stand there like a statue. Breathe in and out. I want to see your chest move. I want to see the ribs move. And knowing that the tendency is to do a blowout, draw the bottom part of your ribs toward the pelvis so that you're staying straight up. You should feel the back go from sway to neutral. And as you're standing there, probably there's some tightness in your glutes. Your th quads are hugging a little bit, right? Calves are engaged, lifting, right? Exactly. And your deltoids. Can you feel the outer edges of your shoulder muscles pulling a little? That's where you want to be. Now just take three deep breaths. And then do the sing, do the singing thing. <laughs> do the singing thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not that high. No 
gonna take a dead eye. I'm gonna say, you're, what I see happening, your, your sternocleidomastoid are pulling you down. Do you feel it? So looking for that space there, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Your sternocleidomastoids were pulling down. Could you feel it? Did you feel tight in your neck? So the front right here was, yeah, 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 yeah it was pulling down. So I think that the work is, especially in those higher places that get really like challenging, is you want to even engage your shoulders more. Like it's a pulling apart. So as you're pulling your shoulders back, you're actually pulling your arms apart a little bit. You don't see it in your hands. Like you're just like it's subtle. Right, so like right now I'm just standing. Pull my arms up, back, pull apart. I don't know if you can see, it's almost like pulling the clavicles away. That should relax the SCM. And then there's a lift, so C7, the back of your neck goes back, and there's a lift. So one of the things, I wanna ask you about this. One of the things, and Dan, you've heard this a lot, especially as a tenor or soprano is, is you will get instructions to open the throat and relax it, just mm -hmm. like you're doing a big yawn. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, is that mm -hmm. a line? It should put the body in the yeah, right line. Yeah, if you're yeah. doing this, yes. you'll be able to open your throat. So when you're, a lot, when, you're, when you're getting strained and these take over, it's effectively closing you, but it's like from the outside skeletal muscles, not from your larynx. So put your hands up, or, or, or well, either your hands, or you can guide it however you want, but. This alignment, to me, for singers, because we know that the larynx has to move up, but it still needs to float. There can't be tension that constricts mm -hmm. it. So if I'm, and I'm a mezzo, I'm not a soprano, but I'm gonna sing what you are singing, and I'm gonna pull my mask down for just a sec, because we were talking about this. And this is new for me. And Very turn, new. turn your left toes in just a bit. Okay. Turn your right toes in just a bit. Now press in your feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and that feels pigeon toed. Sure but this feels good. good. Yeah. Now you're gonna. Your inner ankles are going back. So press down. Inner ankles spin back. Outer ankles drop down. So it's this outer option ankle. of this. Oh, oh okay. okay. There you go. Now hug it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the front of the pelvis is toward the belly button. Toward mm -hmm. the belly button. There you go. Now pull your shoulders straight to your ears. Straight up to your ears. No, pull them up all the way. Oh, okay. So now, we're them up. pull your arms back. Just stop. Draw your front ribs down toward the pelvis. There you go. C7 is right here. You're going to reach it back. You're not going to lift. You're just going to be reaching back. So you can do yoga, right? And you can really practice standing on your feet every time. There's a, every pose is really the same in the feet. Um, also, like in shoes, you want to do something that will connect you to your arch, your big toe, and the center of your heel. So sometimes it means an orthotic, right? Sometimes, so like even the shoes that you sing in on stage, like I understand performers have to wear whatever they put them in, right? But then you're dancing and running around and you'll figure it out. But like if you're just like in your normal stance, if you can find a shoe that connects you to your arch, your big toe and the center of your heel, then that will land you more in your feet, more in your legs, more in your body, more in your pelvis. And I wear wedges and stuff like that to work. And when I do, I have to like overthink because now I'm up here on my feet and I have to really like think about, it. okay, arch, heel, and it takes a little more to pull the ribs down, right? And then you just want to start walking in your feet, standing in your feet when you're brushing your teeth, look at your feet, you know, and they go, okay, not in them and stand in them and feel them. Mm -hmm. When you get in your mirror, like pull, like, like really do this thing. Um, and it's funny, like when we, when our alignment, it's like, it's like feet at 12 o'clock, 
Press the mound of the big toe down. Press the center of your heel down. Lift up. Turn your inner ankles back. Press your outer ankles down. Hug the muscles to the bones. Lift the front of the pelvis up to neutral. Draw the shoulders up toward the ears and pull them straight back. Draw the front ribs down. Could you set that to music and a hip hop beat? Because that would be a great warm up just to get going. We're going to have to do that. Can you do that, Natalie? Can you set that to music and a hip hop beat? Um, <laughs> you want Lizzo? <laughs> no. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, and we can, we can play with this a little bit more. So um, I'm trying to think like what would be a challenge, but also rest. Um, Mm, the throat open. No. Now you have to make it up. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> We're going to do it. We got your I'll have to write it down and you'll have to make it up. Um, Can we do something where we're sustaining a long breath and placing that effective, even breath in this beautiful alignment? So we could, it doesn't have to be singing, but maybe the goal is to do a 20 second exhalation on a And just check for a really nice even release on top, layering it on top of these postural alignment positions we're working on. Yeah, so that, um, and then I'd like to add hits to that eventually, but I just want you to feel how easy I'm thinking it's going to be to balance that breath when the body's in the line. Yeah, it's pretty, it's the, it's pretty powerful. I'm trying to think if there's, um, you guys okay standing on your feet? Turn your feet on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when we, when we teach yoga, we call it a Ujjayi breath, right? Ujjayi breath is just a full diaphragmatic breath. The inhale is long and the exhale may be a little longer. And the way that, the way that you're usually, we're usually coached to exhale is to, create a slight constriction and let it come out slow, I actually tend to slow it down from the base. <laughs> so instead of pushing my air out, I just let it seep out. Something about the constricting makes me uncomfortable. I think I might have drowned in my previous life or something. <laughs> so I, you know, I tend to open my throat to breathe in. It's all nasal though, so I'm breathing in through my nose. And then out. So that you guys will probably have a longer breath than I have. And you, you, so I have a practice breath. I'm also an asthmatic. So I don't feel like my breath is the longest that there is. It's fairly practiced, but you know, it doesn't always be. So there's the timing of it. I would say you fill to capacity and then you slowly empty. And just, you know, your mouth is closed, but relax. No, you know, you're not. Just go out through your nose, just do a couple of those, and then we'll do the ones through the mouth with the sounds. So, so first, like the true north of the mountain is gonna be feet, thighs, pelvis, shoulders, head and neck, ribs. So we're here. Front of the pelvis probably a little bit more. Now transition that for singing. You'll breathe in. And you want sis? Yeah, like a tss. Okay, breathe in. And do your tss. Can you get totally up close and personal? Can I let them do this with you on each breath and literally watch and feel your, your engagement on this one? I think mm -hmm. this is the biggest lesson right here. Mm -hmm. Brandon, she's going to step in front of you, and you're going to breathe for her, but I want you to, and we, we do this when we mirror, I want you to feel what she's doing, okay? So you're going to do it with her, and she can do the same thing to the chuck, but you want to feel that same amount of tension and engagement. Is that a good reference point for now what you can look for her? She's like a fantastic breath. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So now you 
try and match that, and she can do that with Rowan and with Tristan. Because I found the piece. So you found the piece? Mm -hmm. So it really comes from the feet. Like it really does. Like it sounds so crazy, but you root down to lift up. And well, so you, if you think about down. your feet, you're rooting down with the mounds of your feet, the center of your head, like you're pressing into the floor. I, I shouldn't be able to lift, like try to lift my foot up off the ground. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> really, you're not going to move it. You're not going to move it because I am pushing into it. So it's not just standing here gravitationally. Now I'm moving. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So how do you? I, like, I had to let go. Sorry. Like, no, I had to like really like let go because I, I I I practice so much. I'm standing in them so that I get my pelvis neutral because that keeps my joints healthy. Right. Okay. So. You get old enough and have enough injury, you're like, oh crap, I gotta really do this like all the time. If I do, because most of my life is just standing in my office, squatting, standing, moving, doing, and if I don't stand on my feet, I'm gonna create more injury, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, that's what it's about, but it like has so many purposes. Not only just calm, so this breathing will, it, it changes your parasympathetic nervous system and calms you down, like straight down. So even if before you walked on stage, you just stood in your feet and you took like five deep breaths, you're setting the tone and then you walk out on stage, find your pose and you can do it seated. It can teach you how to do it seated, but you find your pose and then you let your breath move and you just sing with your diaphragm, diaphragmic breath. It is so integrated because it's integrated from the center mm -hmm. and from the earth. Yeah. Um, so the, Okay, go. Just breathe. So you use a lot more diaphragm. Right a here. lot more diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Now let your wrist expand. Now slowly out. Nice. We will share in the notes <clears throat> and at the end um, where you can join Dr. Atkins, Dr. Lori, in one of her yoga classes okay, as well as her yoga training. And exhaling singing, right? Because you're not panting. <laughs> but you, you extend where that is. Mm -hmm. right? You extend where the end is by practicing that. Mm -hmm. Keep going. All yeah, right. I love this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you have to stand on your feet. So you're swaying your back. Center in your feet, front of the pelvis, front of the pelvis, the right there, deep breath. Good, that's it. If you feel that, it was subtle, if you feel it. And then the front rib, this one, toward the pelvis. Okay, now expand. So the the thing to kind of consider too, like when so your 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 lungs are sitting inside the chest cavity, right? Mm -hmm. So if your arms are here, mm -hmm. you're shrinking this part of your chest cavity and you can't use it. So you want to fill the lung spaces here, 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 like all of them. And you, the diaphragm is your primary puller, right? So pull the air through, but you want to expand everywhere. So if, you're, if your shoulders are kind of hanging out, then it doesn't work. So you want to, so that this whole like out and back of the shoulders, I mean, I know at first it feels and looks really weird, but then it just becomes the way you stand, but it doesn't look so weird. You just look upright. Can I ask you a question? Uh -huh. What's the practice that somebody can do every day to help remind themselves to keep the shoulders back? The shoulders back? You know, so honestly, I, I kind of, I, I do the walkthrough. I go feet, pelvis, 
in the neck, like because you know you, the work of your neck is here. So the I, the when um, and you know it, it's it helped that I had a full year of repeating these things over and over and over again in a big group setting to land them in my body. And so I think I will. I'll write under Sam, and LK can create a a jam. <laughs> And you guys will have a jam, and it will just be in you, and you'll just do it, and it won't, it won't feel so awkward. I also, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I think strength training changes your life. And so strength training that works your upper back and your shoulders, we tend to do a lot of stuff forward. So anything that works your back, your pullers, mm -hmm. all that stuff will kind of help to expand so that you've got all that space, right? It really does help. The practice of yoga itself, like moving through down dog, up dog, forward fold, all of those things work too to integrate you and expand. And thinking about like the vertebral column is the back side of the, the breathers, right? And then the ribs wrap around and you've got your sternum and this is all muscular. And so the, the expansion of the column lengthens the space that you sit your organs in. So it lengthens where your lungs can expand. Mm -hmm. um, and so the shoulders are the upper part of that, right? So the ones that are lifting it from here. If the shoulders are saggy, so is this. Mm -hmm. This becomes your lift. Mm -hmm. And engaging your shoulders takes you out of your neck. Neck tension. Mm -hmm. So if you engage your shoulders, your neck is easy. Shoulders engaged, neck easy. Shoulders don't, neck tight. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you know, engage in your feet, squeeze your quads, then guess what? You're free to move pretty easily. Otherwise, your hamstrings and glutes take over and quads are easy. Okay, tenor. Tenor. Uh, tenor. Uh, oh. <laughs> Where is it? So the base. Here's the base. Here's the base. Up. Okay. So, as she's working with him, I'm going to just play an exercise that you guys can okay. do to stop the other your breath as well. Just <coughs> so like that's about all, all the alignment exercise. Most of you've already done it anyhow. There you go. Now be easy in your neck. Lift your head straight up off your neck. Okay. Pull your shoulders up and back. And then it's front pose. We do it on a hum or a bow. Space he's got in his chest cavity. That's a nice space. 
cases have really, they have to have those big barrel chests. Yeah. Yeah. So the, what I told him to do is probably get like a towel or a blanket that he can wrap around and like hold that mm -hmm. and see if he can start to expand in his back a little bit more. I mean, it, so what he's doing is working now, but eventually it's going to create so much tension that it quits working. Yes. Right? That's brilliant. And so, yeah. And then, so from here, I bet he could do that exercise on pulling your head. Oh my God. I just want you to think about like, all of your spine touching the floor. That's right. Uh huh. And then from you're pushing into your feet. Okay. And your tailbone is on the floor, but there's a slight lift. Okay. Good. Now just breathe in your nose. Breathe out slow. Empty it though, all the way up, 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 all the way up. Now slowly breathe in. And then do the sis out from the floor. Tristan, can you do that and exhale just on a pitch, just in that bottom part of your voice? It's really easy. Any vowel or closed consonant you want, just to see how that moves sound through your body. Before you do that, take a breath in and out. Clarity. 
changed, but I don't know if that was just me. Or I did it good. Okay. It's a little clearer. Yeah, the vibrato in the onset was just more consistent. Uh -huh. It didn't feel like sometimes the sound, the vibrato will change on the onset because we've tensed or release the muscle that should have already been engaged in emotion prior to releasing the sound. Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was It's just say. like a sports car. When you drive a Porsche yeah. and you put your foot on the gas, it goes yeah, it does. When you drive a clunker and you haven't turned it, it goes <laughs> boop, 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 right? But we're only driving Porsches here. We're only driving Porsches. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. So the, you know, that being said, the, um, I think that the other place to do this work is just seated. And for me to do it seated, I actually, like you can probably do it like that. That doesn't look like you feel like you your knees or your hips at all. It's good. Yeah, so I have to like sit up on two blocks. I have to be really high. But you can find that place where, and I always turn my feet like this. The reason that I do that is because that's like standing, right? This is not what this is. And so this is like standing. So it allows me to take my inner ankles back, outer ankles down, which is going to be on this is my inner ankles up, outer ankles back, right? Because this is a down, up, and then from there into active calves, into my quads. And then finding the center of the pelvis, getting the bones straight down. And this is how you translate it to your chair. When you're sitting on a stool, mm -hmm. it would be better if you would always request some place to put your feet, not dangled, because you can connect there. But this is how you translate. You put your sits bones down, you ground into them, you find a place for your feet. If they're in the air, you keep them active. Stack your shoulders. Sometimes, as far as like pelvic engagement, it's easier to do that as seated. Like, were you doing that with me? Were you doing that with me a little bit just then? Yeah. So, like, so when you do that, like, so when you really, like, so where you are now, you're kind of pressing down into your feet, like, a little bit. And then you're drawing up. When you draw up, you should feel the sit bones anchor. Do you feel that? Like, the bones in the butt anchor down. And then from then, the front of the pelvis is lifting. You're still doing this. Pulling up through the center line of your body. And shoulders are so relaxed. I always take my hands here just as a connection. Like it just a lot. It kind of, so when my hands are here, I can keep my shoulders engaged. When my hands are here, I feel like it's heavy. So I just do this. And then breathing in and out. All the way out. Don't be afraid to let the ribs come towards the pelvis a little bit. And Now, you can try this now. session we're at an hour I know it's flown by but um, some takeaways that anybody wanted to share just a summary thought that you're taking home and say wow I never knew this or I'm going to bring this into my practice room immediately what, what are some of your takeaways you guys are all deep thinkers I didn't know that I didn't breathe back there <laughs> I knew I needed to get back into yoga <laughs> <laughs> good Daniel any takeaways you know, for me, I thought uh, it, it, it's just really good to know that that kind of connection is there. I, I, I think it's something to be striving for, and um, I definitely think that it's something that I'll be looking into for sure, because I think uh, I, I heard it in, in everybody's voice today. Uh, when they connected, it, it changed the sound, and uh, yeah, I, I think this was great. Awesome. I think it's kind of cool. I have um, actually have some pre 
pre-recorded classes on my YouTube channel, and I post some onto the Facebook page too that um, LK can share with you. I teach live just really um, Sunday mornings at 7.30 is the only day I teach lives on, on Zoom, and it's a long story of a no-compete clause, but that's what I'm doing. And um, I'm teaching two people there, and it would be it'd be really interesting for me to know if you did one of those classes, and every time there was an exhale, if you did some kind of a ha, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. just to like, I mean, you're in your own space, not the most ideal, mm -hmm. but it'd be really interesting in some of those places to try it on and maybe a down dog and try it on maybe in a standing pose and try it on. In a, in a if something that's challenging, and just try it on and see what changes and how you can find the muscles, because that's really what it's about, is kind of finding those muscles and creating the neurologic and the connection that's going to allow you to keep doing it. Um, and so I think it would be pretty cool in that way. And there's somewhere to record it to you anytime if you want to offer you. <clears throat> and Lori, we'll put it in the comments, but your YouTube channel is Lori Williamson. It's Lori Williamson. And there's two Lori Williamson's on YouTube. Mine has content. Yours has content. Good to know. All right. Anybody else have anything they want to share? Uh, just any moment of enlightenment or a word of thanks for Dr. Lori? Brandon, I know I didn't give you a chance to say anything. The feet are just game changing. I meant for everything that I have, or including singing. Mm -hmm. That's for everything. Yeah. Thank you. Very beautiful. Yeah, just, just from this little bit of time, I feel so much better than I did before I came in. And I didn't even know I, you know, how they need to go about it. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, good. It's, it's all really good. We, we all have patterns. Yeah, I'm thank super you. grateful. Yeah, and just that enlightenment that we can continue to grow and change and that we have a lot of mastery over our body if we're willing to commit to, to doing it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. I love the parallels between singing and yoga. I think they're so simpatico. Thank you again, Dr. Lori. Thank you.